So good morning, everybody. My name is Dave Hughes. I'm Director of Product Management here at Leverage, which as you may know, is the service corporation for the League of Southeastern Credit Unions and Affiliates. Uh, today we have uh, the webinar titled Preventing Fraud in Digital Channels. Uh, we have two representatives with Leverage Preferred Partner, Eltropy, with us. Uh, first, we have Jonathan Manosaridis, uh, he'll kick things off, and then presenting will be Chris Harleen. So a little bit about each uh, guy here. Um, we have uh, Jonathan as the marketing manager at LTP, where he oversees social media, webinar marketing, event management, and more. Uh, with a passion for marketing and a knack for driving engagement, Jonathan plays a pivotal role in shaping LTP's digital presence. Jonathan holds a bachelor's degree from Northeastern University and a social media cert certification from Cornell. His expertise in social media management and community engagement has been instrumental in building strong online community communities and fostering meaningful connections. Outside of his professional life, John Jonathan is dedicated, a dedicated soccer fan and self-proclaimed foodie, always on the lookout for new culinary experiences. And for our presenter, Chris, he comes from a diverse background in education and industry experience, ranging from weathering the 2008 economic storm at Goldman Sachs to mobile security and business analytics solutions. Currently serving as the Director of Solution Services at Eltropy, Chris has worked with hundreds of community financial institutions to combat fraud with their digital channels, within their digital channels. Chris will discuss his experience of the last few years leveraging video and other digital channels to reduce fraud within credit unions and community banks. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Chris. Or excuse me, Jonathan, kick it off. No worries, no worries. Thank you so much for the warm introduction. Um, and to everybody on the call, we will keep this action-packed, informative, but as concise as possible. Um, as Dave mentioned, I am a big soccer fan and for any other soccer fans on the call, I know we have the last day of the Euros today with some Copa America this evening as well. Go Team USA. So I wanna make sure that we are keeping this action pack informative and you can have the games going on in the background of the screen in just an hour. But before we hop in to all of that, I do wanna level set um, and kind of set the stage for us before we talk about what we're talking about today, which is preventing fraud in digital channels. Um, you know. This is nothing that's new. However, with the rise in technology, fraud is only getting scarier, spookier, not only for you on the credit union side with your agents in your call centers or in your branches. It's also just as scary for your members as well who are being bombarded with scam texts and seeing different videos online of people getting their things stolen. It's a digital world where everything is out in the open and that only makes it scarier to fight fraud from a community financial institution perspective. A couple quick stats here to set the stage. You know, Credit unions and their members are facing a growing volume of attacks every year according to FTC released data. Uh, consumers have lost over $10 billion to fraud in 2023, that's a 14% increase from 2022. And I was reading um, an article this morning, I get weekly articles because I'm a nerd and I have a journalism degree, learning just more about credit card fraud, which has been such a, a big topic of discussion as well. If we look just at credit card fraud, it's the same amount, 246 million there. And what was really interesting about that report is the most impacted age demographic was not your younger 19 and under your 20 to 29 Gen Zers like the one you're looking at here. The most impacted was the age range between 40 to 69, which when we talk about credit union members, appreciate the fist pump there, Chris, when we talk about credit union members, that is our bread and butter. Yes, we want to appeal to the younger people that look like me with a baby face, However, what we have in our credit union right now, these are the people that are under attack the most because of the changing technologies. There exposes some vulnerabilities there. So in this call today, we're going to be focusing on two specific types of frauds, member phishing scams and inbound contact center scams. And we're going to talk about how a solution like LGP can help. When it comes to fighting fraud, the fraudsters are very smart. So you have to attack them with that same level of intellect using things like secure chat or texting. We're gonna talk about two-factor authentication, member verify, video verify, real-time ID verification. When it comes to having a strong, a strong fraud deterrent, 
it's all about having a multitude of digital channels, a Iron Man suit of armor to fight back, if you will. And, and without further ado, to talk more about that Iron Man suit of armor, when it comes to fraud fighting, I want to kick it over to my colleague, Chris Harline. And Chris, the floor is all yours. Wow. Um, appreciate uh, all the metrics and the details there. So um, really set the stage appropriately for what we're going to talk about today. Um, let's just be real. My objective today is to provide some ideas and technology to you so you can kind of create some ideas around how you want to fight fraud within your, your credit unions. Um, the second objective I have is to give you some time back in your day. Um, we're not going to be here for the full hour. We're going to give you as much time as you want. I will be here as long as you need. Um, but understanding how busy everybody is, we want to be very clear and concise in our presentation today. Um, the other thing I'm going to ask is for you to bear with me as I, I tell somewhat of a unique story um, that has nothing to do with credit unions. So, um, you know, obviously without, the, without a, answering, um, is, has anybody seen any of these trailers around. You should see them at big box retail locations, um, in parking lots, places like that. So I worked at a company prior to Eltropy uh, that manufactured and deployed these trailers. Now, bear with me while I, while I talk about this. We're, we're definitely going to stay on topic here. But the question that was constantly raised is how can cameras actually reduce theft because uh, the the solution that you're seeing here is designed and has proven incredibly effective at reducing retail theft at locations where they are deployed so much so that at one of the big box retailers where they were deployed the business that was adjacent to it and they're always adjacent to each other called the original big box retailer and said what are you doing because our crime just went through the roof so that secondary retailer deployed these trailers the reason i bring this up is because it was the visual impact the technical impact and the thought of you know what there's cameras here i can find an easier target and so what we saw at this organization was that the crime would go from one pocket, they would deploy these trailers, and that crime would move somewhere else to find an easier target. They deploy the trailers, it would move to find an easier target. So the idea today that I'm, I'm raising is that through leveraging additional digital channels and technology, you're going to drive any type of fraud that would have been directed at you, and they will seek out an easier target. So thank you for bearing with me going on a side route that obviously doesn't truly apply technologically to, to those in this, uh, this webinar. Um, before we proceed into the technology, I just wanna kind of give you this leave behind for those that watch the webinar after um, just some of the different technologies that Eltropy is able to provide to, to credit unions and, and basically community financial institutions. Today, we're gonna spend a lot of time on the text and video side, um, but within our technology, we do Eltropy, we do enterprise texting, video banking technology, contact center, branch operations, artificial intelligence. There's a lot more technology that can be leveraged here uh, than what you are going to see today. Um, today, again, we've just selected a few tidbits to, to or pieces of our technology that help you combat fraud where all of these are going to be able to help you combat, combat fraud in one way or another. So, well, I guess just to begin, welcome to Eltropy. This is our unified conversations platform. Um, this is not going to be a sales pitch on Eltropy. This is going to be a discussion on how you can leverage this type of technology to fight fraud. Um, if this was an LTP pitch, this is when I'd want balloons and confetti and this whole celebration of, hey, you know, welcome to LTP. 
We're not going to go there. Um, but with our platform, you have the ability to communicate digitally with your members in any form or fashion that you want in the appropriate channels. So like we had, like uh, Jonathan had mentioned at the very beginning, different types of fraud that you were trying to prevent. One of the most prevalent is when they call in to your contact center. Some fraudulent individual calls in, they have maybe replicated the, that member's number. Um, that is something that is absolutely fought possible to be able to, to change the number, replicate that number as they call in. Um, now, what Eltropy provides, or that first step of protection is the ability to do a one-time passcode to the phone number of record. So let's say this individual calls in. Chris calls in and says, yes, you know, my name is Chris and I need to know my account number and my account balance. Well, for me as the contact center agent, the first thing that I want to do is I'm gonna say, okay, Chris, I'm going to pull up your, your information on record and I'm going to send you a six-digit passcode. Essentially, this first step to fighting voice fraud is to provide that one-step passcode where now with a single click of a button, I am able to send a text out to that individual. Now, a few things as we begin here. One, this is not a code that I am generating as the, at the contact center. This is not a code that I have any visibility into. I cannot force verify this contact. I need this code. So let's say I provide that code and that is incorrect. Maybe they're guessing, trying to figure this out. Well, now yeah, I'm actually speaking to the correct individual. They provide me the code that they received via text. They verify. And now you have that as a field of record that you have sent that verification code and they have answered it and provided that to you. So even if you're answering this as a phone call, you have now verified that they are saying their name and they have the phone number or they have the phone of record uh, in their possession. Now, mind you, you're not going to sit here and now give them everything set up a million dollar wire transfer, a $10,000 wire transfer, give them their passwords. Any, you, you're not gonna do anything like that with this one step verification. This is a, that simple first step in verifying if someone has called in and, they, and to verify they are who they say they are. If you want to go further, what we have seen with some of our credit union customers has actually been quite innovative and, and, and exciting to see how they leverage the technology. So one of our customers, what they did is they actually set up a moment of friction. Just like the trailers provided that moment of friction for that individual coming in to steal materials, they drive up to that location, they see these large trailers that have a great impact visually and they think, I'm gonna go next door where there are no trailers. Creating those moments of friction between you and your members seems a little bit counterintuitive because everything that we do as a society is reducing friction, making it easier. But to fight fraud, you really actually have to create a moment of friction because it gives that member pause, it gives your agents pause, gives them an opportunity to say, okay, let's just double check. Or as they say in society right now, maybe all in just business, let's double click on that. So what our credit union customer did, and, and they've actually talked about this and they've provided webinars as well, is they leveraged our video banking technology to reduce fraud. The example that they provided was around wire fraud. So they set up a procedure within their credit union. The first step is that member is required to join a video call. And for them, it's as easy as just clicking a single button and sending out that video link. So a few things that you will notice here. One, I apologize, we're gonna have a lot of Chris's on the screen. It is what it is. If you don't like being on video, you don't wanna do my job. 
So this is me as the agent. I'm going to start this video call. It will start the video call here. I will send a text to the member to be able to join that call as well. And so give me just a second while I start this up. But what you will notice is the member with just a couple of clicks is able to now join that video call. And this can be from their mobile device. It could be from their desktop. It could be wherever they are. The idea here is to give them an easy way to join and create a face-to-face -face environment. So first step, inviting that member to join the video call. Just like the camera trailers, the first step is significant. It's bold, it's aggressive, it's new. And if I'm a fraudster, the last thing I wanna do is join a video call because then they're definitely very clearly going to see that I am not Susie. Well, what about those maybe more advanced individuals, more advanced technology that have AI facial masking that can now make themselves look like someone else? Well, that's where you actually take additional steps within Elchapri's video banking technology because one, if they don't have that, they're gone. So you're reducing 95% of, of fraud in this scenario. Uh, again, specifically around wire fraud, you are reducing that 90 to 95% by asking them to join video. Well, what about those with that advanced AI technology? What do you do then? Well, one, they're probably not going to be a, a aggressively attacking most credit unions. Um, potentially they are. But the next step that this credit union deployed was to take our video technology and leverage it for what it's actually worth. Because this is not just FaceTime. So far, it looks like FaceTime. But our video banking technology is what we call knee-to-knee -knee video banking. Because we can actually create transactions within this process. Now, there's a lot of other transactions that we can talk about. The ability to sign documents. The ability to actually deposit checks where that that individual can now you know if it's an account opening scenario they can now actually deposit a check and yes i carry a fake check with me wherever i go um, part of the joys of of helping credit unions fight fraud is being a fraudster myself so to speak but there's different things that you can do now what this credit union did in their procedure is they said that there's two additional steps beyond video the first step is to do an ID verification. Now, instead of just, hey, here's my ID and providing it visually, our system actually can do this, well, systemically, where I can come in, I'm going to start this workflow. And as I start this workflow, as the customer, as the member, I can choose how I want to verify myself. Do I want to provide a driver's license, a passport, an ID card? I'm going to provide a, an, or a, a driver's license. And there's a few steps that I can use now. First off, I can hold my ID up and take a picture. But cameras on computers generally aren't that, aren't that great. So if I'm joining through my phone, that would be easier. But I'm on my computer now. So what I actually can do is I can scan this QR code using my phone. And now with that, I'm able to actually take a picture of that driver's license from my mobile device. So now I can get a high quality image of that device using my mobile, even if I'm joining this call on my desktop. But in this scenario, I'm actually going to upload it from my desktop because I have a copy of my ID. So I'm going to grab a copy of the front of my license, and I'm going to provide a copy of the back of my license. Now, I want to talk about what's actually happening here. What our platform is doing is it's actually overlaying all 50 state IDs to verify what state is it from, and it's going to be older versions and current versions, as you'll see here in a moment. It's then running optical character recognition on that driver's license. It's also looking for wear and tear marks and shadows. It's verifying that it is an actual physical ID and not just a graphic of an ID. 
a graphic, again, very easy to replicate. A physical ID, it's another moment of friction, making sure that they actually have that physical ID, much more difficult to replicate. Now, I've provided that to the, to the agent. Now, the agent's able to review this, is able to see, okay, this is Chris prior to the beard, so it's been quite a while. But I also noticed something else, that the ID has expired. Well, the system has already identified that as well. So it's verifying not only the information that is on that through that optical character recognition, but it's verifying the expiration dates, et cetera. Here, it loves this ID because there's a lot of wear and tear on it. So those are different scenarios that the system's actually looking for to provide you an approval or non-approval of that ID. Now, at this point, I have the ability to accept or decline that ID. In this scenario, I would decline that and ask for a verified valid ID instead of out of date ID. For this call, we're going to just proceed forward and accept that ID. Now our system also has the ability to trigger beyond that ID verification, but ID verification with knowledge base authentication. So instead of that moment where I accept it and we move back into the face-to-face -face conversation, I also have the ability to trigger those five out of wallet questions. You know, where did you live in the 90s? And, you know, who's your favorite third cousin twice removed? Whatever the questions are that are triggered. But what makes it unique here is that with Eltropy, they're triggered in the workflow that we just watched. The member has to answer those questions, and then the agent is provided the score at the end. The agent does not need to take the time to, to ask the questions verbally, get an answer back. It's all provided in the flow of this video conversation. So fighting fraud, first off, we're talking about wire fraud, but this can be used for account opening, having that member join that video call. Second step, providing that ID verification. So now we've visually confirmed who they are. We have systemically through their ID confirmed who they are. And then you could proceed forward with any additional steps. The credit union talks about that, that told us about how they're fighting wire fraud. Uh, they brought up an interesting close to the, to the scenario. Well, they have to have someone authorize that wire transfer. So they do it through document signature. Now this document signature, what actually makes it unique um, interestingly enough, I was actually on site with a credit union in Warren, Ohio, and they were actually going through some litigation at the moment, some challenges, because they had someone sign a document through DocuSign, and then after the fact say, that wasn't my signature. Well, it looks like my signature, but that wasn't me that signed it. So they were having some serious issues there. Well, what makes Elterpy's digital signature technology through video unique is not only are we capturing the IP address and the signature, but we also take a snapshot of the video feed the moment that individual starts to sign. So now that credit union in Ohio could go back to that individual and say, well, here's your IP address and here's your signature and here's your face as you signed that document. So, Additional steps, this one actually doesn't create any friction. This actually eases the problem. They don't have to come in and sign any documents. They're able to do it digitally in the flow of the conversation here quick and easy. But that moment of friction comes later if they try to fight what you have provided to them as the service. So different capabilities here driving to reduce fraud, contention, challenge, anything at all. So we see this being used extensively to combat wire fraud. The credit union that tells this story, they actually took their wire fraud down to zero. Now I'm not going to come in. I'm not one of those guys that comes in and promises, hey, we're going to take all fraud down to zero. We absolutely will have a great impact on it. Like we talked about 90, 90 to 95% of fraudulent activity, if asked to join a video call, they will drop off. Then when you do the systemic ID check, document signature through video, all of this being recorded, 
you're going to eliminate a vast majority, if not all, of fraudulent activity. And that's wire fraud. Account opening. Have members join this video call to open this account. Not only are you able to avoid fraud by getting them to join, you can see if it is Susie or not, but you're also increasing that member experience. You're providing that additional safety net that those trailers sitting in front provided that safety net for individuals that maybe felt unsafe going into the big box retailer in the evenings, in the dark. They felt safe. Now your members are going to feel safe because you've taken these steps of friction to create protection for them. But you're also opening up a window of opportunity to provide service that they don't see elsewhere. Now, I might be a thousand miles away, but I can join a financial advisor. I can request a loan. I can create an account all while sitting on my couch because I'm able to join through video banking technology. So that's the idea and the vision that we take when you are looking to combat fraud, but not only are you able to combat fraud, but you're able to provide a higher value, higher touch member experience and provide additional services to those members that might not be near a branch location. So I've seen there's been a few maybe comments or questions come in through chat. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video call. And like I do at the end of every one, I'm going to give myself a high five. Again, I hate being on video. So this is my reward for being excessively on video. By the way, my record is 12 Chris's in one room. That became very quickly uh, excessive. So I'm going to end that video call. But I also want to highlight what is provided after the fact. So with Eltropy, again, looking at fraud, audits, looking after the fact to see, hey, what could we have done better? One, I have done that member verification. I had that member join the video call. I did an ID scan workflow was completed between me and the member. But now I also have a recording of that video. Uh, just a couple of seconds. So it takes maybe a minute, depending on the length of the video, for that, ID, for that video to be available. But now, if after the fact you come back and see something occurred, there was an issue, there was a challenge, or maybe something on video occurred where the agent was questioning it or wanted to provide this to their manager as you know, hey, here's something we're seeing. Members are, are, are appreciating this, uh, this movement, this, this opportunity. But you can see now I have that entire video conversation recorded for any type of purpose that I might want where I can now download this. Now, Eltropy does provide um, 100 gigabytes of, of video recording depending on your volume and video recordings or, or volume or length of calls we're seeing anywhere between four to 6,000 conversations that are stored uh, within the cloud at any given time. So you're going to have a, all of the steps that you're going through to fight that fraud as it's happening, but you also have everything after the fact to verify what steps were taken uh, and that ability to download, save those and provide those for any type of intent that you might have. Okay, so like I said, I want to take a step back. I want to give back more time to individuals. I do see we have uh, some questions. We have a hand raise in chat. Um, so how, Dave, how would you like to proceed? Do you want to call on people? Um, I'm not sure how they can unmute. I can go through the chat. Uh, there we go. Oh, okay. So nothing in the chat that I need. So Dave, what can we do now? How, let's answer some questions. Here's a question. Um, Chris, how quickly are credit unions able to implement, implement this type of strategy? Yeah, great question. So for Eltropy customers that are leveraging texting and video, we're talking just a procedural implementation. We're talking a, a day. Like, okay, here are the steps that we have to follow to, to submit a wire or do a wire transfer. Um, Without our, with, if you were to begin or come to Eltropy and say, hey, 
we've had some wire fraud issues. We need to go and deploy this live. We would be looking at probably anywhere between a six to eight, maybe at the max, a 12 week deployment uh, of texting and video. We do have chat. We do have voice. We do have AI. We have a lot of other technology. But if you were to come in and say, I need to deploy texting and I need to deploy video banking technology, you'd probably be looking at a six to eight week deployment uh, to go live uh, with both of these technologies. So pretty quick, this is not a core conversion by any stretch of the imagination. And I know saying core conversion probably gives everybody the chills. This is not anywhere near that type of workload. Another question, Chris, um, are there any other uses for this video banking technology within a credit union? Yeah, so there's a few that we've touched on today. One, the major one that everybody talks about, wire, for, wire fraud, reducing wire fraud, or preventing fraud in general. Uh, the other one I mentioned a little bit is account opening. We see a lot of fraudulent accounts being opened where it's difficult, especially if you're doing this digitally and not requiring that member to come in on site. We see a lot of account opening issues. Uh, so deploying this within account opening. That one, it not only reduces that potential for fraud, but it also provides that, like I had mentioned, that really high touch valued member experience where now the member looks at you as the credit union and says, wow, they're, they're very tech forward, which is not what most people think when they think of the credit union space. They think higher value, higher touch, lower technology capabilities. But if they're now joining a video call and, and you're able to provide them that face-to-face -face service you're now changing the game there. Um, document signature, we actually have a really interesting story of how that's leveraged. Uh, actually a video that we can share if, if people would be interested um, where um, it's called the baby cow video. Um, maybe some people have seen it. it. It's gotten some notoriety. I, I made a major mistake and I was meeting with a bank in Nebraska and I said, hey, I wanna show you the baby cow video. Not smart because everybody in Nebraska immediately was like, that's not a cow, that's a calf. And I'm like, it's a video titled baby cow, I'm sorry. Anyway, what it was, it's actually a, um, a dairy farmer that needed to sign an additional document for an additional loan that they were getting. Instead of having that dairy farmer leave the farm and come into that branch location, that dairy farmer from their phone, standing there with a baby cow, was able to now answer the questions, meet with that loan officer face-to-face, -face, sign the document while that baby cow is sitting next to it, and be done. So changes the game for a lot of people, depending on their situation. I think, and again, I apologize, long answer here. The most entertaining one that I've ever heard, there was a small business owner, worked out of his home. He literally lived across the street from his credit union. He would come into the branch location two, three times a week. Well, one day he was sick. They invited him to join a video call. So he was actually sitting there on his couch, joined a video call, was able to complete his transaction, and then was still on the couch. The interesting piece was, though, after the fact, he very rarely came into the office, into the branch anymore. He could see the credit union out his front window, but he chose to leverage video banking technology because he knew he would take one minute out of his day instead of 20 or 30 minutes by joining remotely. So the options, the ideas, this is where we come to the credit union and say, hey, what are some other ideas that you have? Here's what we've seen as effective. Any other questions, any other ideas, uh, strategies that you would like to see? Um, so really interesting thing there. Um, I know we have uh, Dejuana, uh, hopefully I apologize if I you know, butchered your, your name. I see you have your hand raised and have for a while. Um, Dave, how are we able to, should we have them text? Are you able to unmute or how do you uh, actually do I answer shot, that question? I shot. Uh, Juana, um, a message here in the chat, and I didn't get a response back, a direct message. Okay. Um, so uh, I don't know if that, maybe that was an inadvertent uh, raising of the hand. Um, I have a question here from Richard. Uh, uh, 
There yeah. we go. They said, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. So Richard asks, we open online accounts through Meridian Link. Does LTP integrate with Meridian, Meridian Link to allow for a picture of the member during the account opening process? Absolutely, 100% yes. Uh, Meridian Link, uh, so let's see, our most common integrations, we have 35 plus integrations pre-built. Most common integrations like Scimitar, Correlation for Cores, uh, Meridian Link for, um, for account opening, Meridian Link for uh, consumer lending. Yes, so we have a deep integration with Meridian Link. That integration goes beyond what you've seen today. Um, one of the other value adds that l brings um, to the credit union is the ability to collect documents. And I'm gonna put air quotes up here via text because texting is not a secure form of communication. So what l does is we actually have the ability to create a document collection portal via text, but where it impacts you with Meridian Link is when you send out that request for that account opening, maybe they need to, um, you know, you need to receive a couple of documents from them. Instead of having it on video, you can do this through text. They could submit those documents, but the moment that they submit those documents, it actually feeds back into the Meridian Link platform automatically and files those documents away. So there's a lot of efficiency gains there through that either account opening or consumer lending with our integration with Meridian Link. And if I may, um, we actually did a webinar uh, and this was a, a couple of years back at the end of 2022. I can't believe we're already halfway through 2024, <laughs> I'm being honest, but um, one of our credit union friends and I did a webinar where we talked about that Meridian Link integration. And then towards the end, kind of like what Chris did, we showed you how it works. And just from my perspective, we, funded from start to finish alone in under 15 minutes and it passed all the security checks i was on my end uploading documentation by a text and just from a personal perspective taking a step out even still because you know we're talking about my generation as well being that younger generation appealing to that generation you know i'm sitting there on the webinar thinking to myself golly i wish my financial institution was able to do this this would make my life a million times easier so if you are, Richard, if you're more interested in that, please reach out to us and, and we can get that webinar sent over to you if you want to see visually what that looks like a little bit more. Yeah, Richard, um, we if also you want to shoot me an email, um, I can uh, get that uh, webinar from Jonathan, I'm sure. And I can send it over to you. I have and we're also email happy address. to... Oh, sorry. I put my email address in the chat box for, uh, for those of you who are looking for it. And we're also happy to set up any personalized one-to-one -one demonstrations for people. That's what I do all day, every day. Um, literally, I have done a, a hundred demonstrations this quarter. So I do this all day, every day. It's what I love to do. It's what I'm passionate about. I get excited to do it. So if anybody wants to see this in greater depth, understand our integrations more, the, the rest of the technologies, how we leverage AI to create automation, how the integration like Richard, you talked about with Meridian Link, one of our fun integrations that we talk about is our pizza tracker for loans. Yeah. The ability to have it automatically send a text when that loan moves from one step to the next or one stage to the next. Kind of like seeing where your pizza is, when it will be delivered. Now you can figure out, hey, where is my loan? You'll automatically be updated uh, as the member. So there's a lot more that we can cover and, and touch on and happy to do live live demonstrations with anybody that uh, that would be interested. All right. Well, I think that's all we have for questions. And uh, I just have to say, Chris, for somebody that does not like to be on video, you have captivated our audience. <laughs> Nobody has dropped off this call. Uh, so that's uh, a great thing to see. Um, so I would like to thank you for being on the video today on the webinar and same to you, Jonathan, thank you for your time and everybody in our audience and bear in mind that the learning with leverage series goes on uh, every second and fourth Tuesday of the month at 11 o'clock AM Eastern time. Keep your eyes out for uh, an email invitation. And uh, again, thanks to everybody for joining us today. Have a great day. Thank you all so much. Thanks everyone.